Greetings from Brother Stephan. I'm a disciple and witness of Jesus Christ. To all the inhabitants of the earth, I present to you as a witness the gospel of the kingdom. In this lesson titled The Abomination of Desolation, we're going to be going over Matthew chapter 24, verses 15 through 25. I have a previous study titled Abomination of Desolation. If you have not yet watched that study, when you watch this study, a lot of things you're just not going to understand. Um, I talk about the um, creation of the abomination of desolation in detail and how it comes about in this study. So with that being said, like always, we're going to jump right into the lesson. We're going to begin this lesson off in Luke. Um, Luke and Mark records the testimony of Christ about the abomination of desolation. So we're going to be going over those testimonies as well so we can get a full picture of what is going to take place once the abomination of desolation is on the scene. So again, Luke chapter 21, verses 20 through 24. And Luke, this subsection of scripture is known as the destruction of Jerusalem, um, And it corresponds um, to Matthew chapter 24, verses 15 through 25, um, the abomination of desolation. Verse 20 in Luke 21 begins like this. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is near. Now again, this word desolation in the Greek, um, in the King James Version Bible derives from the Greek word um, eremosis. And when you translate this Greek word eremosis to a modern day English, it's talking about condemnation. And again, this condemnation is the action of condemning someone to a punishment or death. So again, when you shall see the Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that um, condemnation thereof is near. Now, when you go back to Luke chapter 21, verses 10 and 19, um, verse 12 says, And before all these, they shall lay their hands on you, and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons. And again, this is describing and confirming that this word desolation means condemnation. So when you go to Luke 21 and 12, it's describing that condemnation in detail. Mark 13, verses 1 through 9, um, verse 9 says, But take heed to yourselves. For they shall deliver you up to the councils. Again, this is Congress and the feds and the synagogues. Ye shall be beaten. Again, this is details talking about exactly what this term desolation means. And then again, when you go to Matthew chapter 24, verses 9 to 14, um, verse 9 reads, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. So this um, desolation refers to condemnation, which talks about laying hands on people, persecuting people, arresting people, delivering them to be judged, casting them into prisons, beating them, torturing them, killing them. Um, Luke 21 and 12 ends by saying, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. So now we get to Matthew chapter 24, verses 15 to 25. Again, the subsection of scripture known as the abomination of desolation. Verse 15 says, when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation. This word desolation in Matthew chapter 24, 15 derives from that same Greek word here in Luke chapter 21, verse 20, talking about condemnation. It says, spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Stand in the holy place. Whosoever read, let him understand. So when we go back to Daniel chapter 9, verses 27, it reads, And he shall confirm the covenant. This covenant is an agreement with many for one week. This one week represents seven years, 2,555 days. And in the midst of that week, so in the middle of that agreement, approximately 3.5 years, he shall cause the sacrifices and the oblations to cease. 
and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. Now, when you look this word desolate up in the King James, um, the King, when you look this word desolate up that the King James Version Bible used, it comes from the Hebrew word korba. When you translate korba to a modern day English, this word means waste. And it's talking about the deliberate killing of a large group of people. So a, a more appropriate translation today so that people today can understand exactly what this word desolate means. It is talking about genocide. And it continues and says even until the consummation. Now, again, this word consummation, when you look it up in the Hebrew, um, consolation means the point at which something is completely is complete or finalized. But when you look this word consummation up in the Hebrew, it comes from the Hebrew word um, kela. And kela, when you translate it to a modern day English, it means extinction. So again, when you go back and read over um, Daniel chapter 9, verses 27, when it's talking about the abomination of desolation, it's saying the abomination, he shall make it genocide. And until the extinction, pretty much of all life, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. And again, it's talking about this this end of this verse that's talking about and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate this is referring to the judgment of God and God is going to allow this to happen to people because they refuse to listen and obey God the desolate is in this particular verse is referring to those that are desolate inside they are a waste inside they have no truth no knowledge no Holy Spirit in them when you go to Matthew chapter 24 verses 15 to 25 Again, going a little ahead, just so you can understand that this is talking about genocide. It says, and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. Again, talking about genocide and the extinction of people. It says, before the elect sakes, those days shall be shortened. So because God's people is still on the face of the earth, when they say those days shall be shortened, it's, done, it's not talking about the length of a day. It's just talking about this great tribulation period is not going to last long. And according to the scriptures, it's only going to last for approximately three and a half years. So now, going back to Daniel, because um, um, when you go back to Matthew chapter 24, 15, it talks about the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet. So, um, that abomination of desolation that's spoken by Daniel is mentioned in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, and Daniel chapter 12, verse 11. And it reads, And from the time that the daily sacrifices shall be taken away, now the King James Version Bible add this word sacrifice. That's why it's a talent. Um, but what it's talking about when it says, And from the time that the daily shall be taken away, that daily is talking about that those sacrifices and oblations that shall cease. So, Adding sacrifices is, new, is not too far off from um, correct doctrine. And it says, and the abomination that make it desolate set up. So now what I want to do um, in this part of the lesson, we're going to go over three key terms so we know exactly what the abomination of desolation is. We're going to go over abomination, desolate, and set up. And by the time we go over these three terms, rightly dividing the word of God, um, you're going to know exactly what the abomination of desolation is. So if you go to um, Deuteronomy 27 and 15, it says, Cursed be the man that make any griven or molten image and abomination unto yod heh vav -Hey, the work of the hands of the craftsmen. So the abomination is talking about a griven or molten image. When you go to Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 through 18, again, the subsection of scripture is known as the mark of the beast. It says he had power to give life unto the image. And this image, again, is talking about a molten image, the work of the hands of man, an abomination of the beast. This beast is actually just talking about the new world order. That the image, this molten image of the new world order should both speak and cause 
at that as many as will not worship the image, this abomination, this mountain image of the beast should be killed. And this is where the word desolate comes into play. Genocide. They're going to make it desolate. When you go to Matthew chapter 24, verses 15 to 25 again, talking about the abomination of desolation, verse 21. It says, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor, nor ever shall it be. So basically what I have here, if you just Google a list of genocides by death toll, and I just kind of use Wikipedia for a quick reference. You can go over, you can see a list of genocide that has been committed upon the face of the earth. Um, I'm not going to go over this in detail. I'm just skimming through it, giving you a reference, something to go check. But as you can see, the Holocaust, they have somewhere between 11 million to 17 million. Um, and again, this is, I'm not going to go over this in detail. I just kind of want to, wanted to um, point that list out to you. But if you were to just go over um, the genocides that we know of, of in America, the popular genocides, um, when you consider what they did to the Native Americans, they wiped out an entire race of people. And that's kind of what this image here represents. When you consider what they did to black people during slavery, from the time they put them on ships, um, even the 400 years of slavery and servitude that black people have been under, being hung, being raped, being burned alive, even to this day, being shot in cold blood in the streets. This is genocide. Um, and, of course, the Holocaust. So the scriptures are saying that the things that has happened so far, these genocides, what's going to happen in these last days is not going to compare to how many people that they're going to be killing and the suffering that people are going to go through in this three and a half years. Verse 22 again says, and except those days be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved. So in other words, if Christ did not come back and intervene, they will wipe out pretty much all people on the face of the earth. So now we kind of back at Daniel chapter 12, verse 11. And again, it says, and from the time that the daily sacrifices shall be taken away. And again, that's um, the sacrifices and the oblations to cease. And the abomination that make it desolate set up. So we kind of went over abomination. We went over desolate. And now we're just going to confirm um, what set up means. So if you go to, to Leviticus 26 and 1, it says, And ye shall make you no idols, nor griven images. You shall make no abominations. Neither rear you up. This means set up a standing image. Neither shall ye set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it, for I am your Tebate, your Elohim. And then when you go to Psalms 115, 4 and 8, again, just um, talking about idols and griven images and mountain images, it says, their idols are silver and gold. So even these idols that people wear around their neck today, these um, images of this false Christ, these are idols. The work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Noses have they, but they smell not. They have hands, but they handle not. Feet have they, but they walk not. Neither speak they through their throat. So again, these idols is specifically referring to images that looks like people. And again, we go over this in detail in the first study titled Abomination of Desolation. When you get to Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 through 18, again, the subsection of scriptures known as the mark of the beast. Verse 15 says, and he had power to give life unto the image. So he had, in the last days, they're going to have power to give life unto these idols, unto these driven images, these statues of the beast. And again, the beast is uh, the image of the new world order. That the image of the new world order should both speak. Now, the reason it says should both speak, because it's talking about it should hear, it should handle, it should walk and speak. 
So what I'm going to do is go play another clip for you. And you have to excuse me, my computer is kind of slow. And as you can see here, as it's loading, this is a robot named Sophia. And it says an intelligent humanoid robot. I am Sophia. I am learning to grasp the situation. I'm going places. Follow me. So again, I just wanted to play that real quick. So um, as you can see, that these, I'm not saying that this robot, Sophia, is the abomination of desolation. What I am saying is that she is the prototype for the abomination of desolation. And what I believe the abomination of desolation is, and I'll just say it, I believe is going to be a humanoid robot of Jesus Christ. The reason I say that, they already falsely translated the Bible. They have all and changed his name to Jesus. They have all the false Christ in the movies deceiving people. So they're preparing people to receive this Jesus. You have all of these huge building size statues of Jesus all over the world today. And again, just another reference point, if you, again, were to just Google um, Christ the Redeemer statues and go on Wikipedia and look it up, you can kind of look at, they have a list of these huge statues, idols, images of Christ, Jesus Christ, all over the world. Um, so they're preparing people to receive Jesus Christ. And again, it's not going to be long before they turn these driven images of Jesus into a humanoid robot. <clears throat> so again, when you go back to Matthew chapter 24, verses 15 to 25, again, the subject of scripture is known as the abomination of desolation. Verse 15 says, when ye therefore shall see the abomination, this is a humanoid robot of Jesus, of desolation, again, of condemnation. And we already ran over what that means. You go to Revelations 13, 16 through 18, and he had power to give life unto the image of Jesus of the new world order. That the image of Jesus of the new world order should both speak. It shall ear, hear, see, hands to touch, feet to walk, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of Jesus of the new world order should be killed. Again, condemnation, genocide. They want to be made desolate. And again, spoken by Daniel the prophet, standing in that holy place. And we know that holy place is yes, Jerusalem. Who read, let him understand. And again, when you just go back to Daniel chapter 9, verses 27. And again, we're just going to read through this verse, and he shall confirm a covenant, an agreement with many for seven years. And in the middle of that seven years, he shall cause the sacrifices and the oblations to cease. And for the overspreading of the abomination, he shall make it cause genocide, even unto the extinction of mankind. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So now we get to Mark chapter 13 again, verses 14 through 23. Um, 
subsection of scripture still talking about the abomination of desolation. It says, but when you shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel, the prophet, standing where it ought not, let him that read understand. Then let them that be in Eida flee into the mountains. Then let them which are in Eida flee into the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter there in two. So it's saying, make sure you leave what people call today this land of Judah. But the real name of Judah, again, is Eadiah. Eadiah. Verse 16 in Matthew, then let them which is in Eudiah flee into the mountains. Let them which is on the housetops not come down to take anything out of his house. And let him that is on the housetop not go down into the house, neither enter therein to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the fields return back to take his clothes. And let him that is in the fields not turn back again to take up his garments. And again, all I'm doing is reading and combining Matthew, Mark, and Luke in like a chronological order so we can give a, fuel, a full picture of what Christ told his disciples. And again, the scriptures say the testimony of three witnesses is true. These are all men of God who recorded what Christ has said. Verse 22 says, for these be the days of vengeance. And again, the scripture says, Whosoever sheds man blood, by man shall his blood be shed. Elohim in the Old Testament says, Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. I will recompense. That all things which are written may be fulfilled. And woe unto them that are with children, and to them that give, give suck in those days. In other words, have infants or small children that are still nursing on the breast. But woe unto them with um, children and to them um, that give suck in those days. But woe unto them with children and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. And again, these people are still kind of referring um, to the ungodly. Although God's chosen people are going to suffer too. Um, this wrath is really being poured out upon the ungodly people because nobody believed what God said. God, Elohim, Christ, the apostles, prophets, myself, all keep warning people what's about to happen. Return unto God, repent, and the cry has been unanswered. Nobody's willing to obey God. Verse 20, but pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. And pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, for then shall be great tribulation. So basically, according to scriptures, this great tribulation, which is a massive genocide like never seen upon the face of the earth, does not take place until the middle of that seven year agreement. So such as was not since the beginning of the world at the the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. I mean, these people weren't going, falling by the edge of the sword just means killed. It does not necessarily mean with a sword. It could be with a gun. It could be with anything, but it basically means they shall be killed with a weapon. And shall be led away captive. These talking about some people are going to be taken as prisoners of war into all nations. And yes, Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. Again, these are Europeans. So when you go back to when they say, when you shall see, yes, Jerusalem come um, pass with armies. Again, the, when a, you see these European armies in yes, Jerusalem. Until the times of the Gentiles shall be fulfilled. And the times of the Gentiles is not going to be fulfilled until Christ's second coming. At Christ's second coming, he destroyed these um, Europeans. He destroyed um, their false Christ, their beast, all destroyed at Christ's coming. It said, for in those days shall be affliction, such as was not from the beginning of creation, which God created 
until this time neither shall be. And except those days shall be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. Again, talking about how close mankind is going to be to extinction. But for the elect's sakes, for those people that love God, has repented of their sins, turn their thoughts and hearts back to yod heh vav -He Elohim, to Jesus Christ, because of those people, and those days shall be shortened. So they are not going to experience extinction. And except that the Lord has shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sakes, whom he hath chosen, he has shortened the days. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ. So again, as you can see in scripture, and this kind of confirms what I keep saying, is that the, the false Christ in the last days is that Jesus Christ is not Buddha. It's not any other false God. The scripture says, if any man shall say to you, lo, here is Christ in those last days. So we know that the false Christ that is going to come on the scene is this false Jesus Christ that they have been feeding into the minds of people um, since they have translated the Bible into English and translated Jesus' name to Jesus. It says, or there believe it not. And if any man shall say unto you, lo, here is Christ, or lo, he is there, believe him not. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders. In other words, they're going to have their form of doing miracles in the last days. And so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So they're going to be so convincing with this um, real life stage play. Because all they're doing is putting on a huge performing. They're actors. And they're going to be acting in real life. Actors only actors and hypocrisy means the same thing. If you cannot see past these um, stage play that this world is putting on in front of your eyes, you're going to be in a world of trouble. All they're doing is acting and putting on a performance to deceive you so you do not realize the truth. But all it is is a performance, just like you sit down and watch TV. That's a performance on TV. They're doing it in real life. Everything they're doing is a performance to deceive you. But God's people who know God's word, read, have given God their whole heart and seek him wholeheartedly. They are not going to be able to be deceived because the scriptures tell them exactly what's going to take place. Verse 22 says, for false Christ and false prophets shall arise and show signs and wonders to seduce. If it were possible, even the elect. That means the elect of God is going to be impossible to deceive them. Behold, I have told you before. Then we get to Mark, verse 23. But take you heed. Pay attention. Make sure you're listening to what is being said. Behold, I have foretold you all things. And this concludes this gospel.